Magandang hapon po muli <clears throat> sa aming mga taga pakinig, taga panood, sa aming mga classmate. Magandang hapon po at magandang hapon dok. Pagpapatuloy po natin ang ating topic, types of chi number 6 na po tayo. So, motive force. Original chi is dynamic motive force that arouses and moves functional activity of all organs. It does so because, like essence, it is foundation of vitality and stamina. So, yung original chi na naka, naka nasa atin po yung kidney. As form of chi, it circulates all over the body in the channels, linked between essence, more fluid, like related to slow, long-term cycles and changes, and day-to-day -day chi, chi like related to short-term cycle and changes. So ito po yung chi na tumutulong dun sa ating organs, di ba, pag, pag kumain tayo yung food, food chi, tapos yung uh, sa hangin, but, uh, that chi, tutulungan po ng motive force o yung original chi para maging ano po siya, maging zong chi. So napakahalaga po ng role ng ano, ng original chi. Tapos magiging zen chi na na nandun yung weight chi at saka nutritive chi. So yun po yung role ng ating chi. So basis of kidney chi. Original chi is basis for kidney chi. Closely related to all kidneys function, functional activities. Original chi dwells between two kidneys between below umbilicus at gate of life. So yun po nasa kidney natin yung ating manang enerhiya. Thus, original chi is closely related to gate of life and share its role of providing heat necessary to all body's functional activities. So, role of uh, facilit facilitates transformation of chi. Yung original chi po natin, siya ang acts as agent of change and transformation. Yung sinasabi ko po kanina, ano? yung gathering chi or yung zong chi. Tapos magiging true chi or tinatawag na zen chi. This is one way in which kidneys where original chi arises from participate in production of chi. So pag naging zen chi na po, ando na yung uh, magiging nutritive chi na siya na circulate sa ating buong organ. Tapos yung wei chi, didistribute ng lungs. Conduit for triple burner. Yung original chi din po is motive force o dong chi situated between two kidneys. Life-giving root of 12 channels. Triple burner causes original chi to differentiate for its different uses around the body. So pag na-distribute na yung sa triple burner, pupunta na yung chi na yun sa iba't ibang organs natin at magpapunction na. Halimbawa yung function ng Spleen and stomach to transform and transport pag kumain tayo ng, pag kumain tayo. So, yun, yun po yung ginagawa ng original chi. Original chi passes through three varners and then spread to five yin and six yang organs and their channels. The places where the original chi stay are the source, U1 points. So, yung original chi, mas nasa U1 points po siya. Pag, pag inacupuncture po natin ang U1 source or U1 point, doon po nang gagaling yung original chi. Triple burner is a special envoy that transmit original chi. Okay. Facilitates transformation of blood. Original chi facilitates transformation of food chi or good chi into blood in the heart. This is one way in which kidney participate in production of blood. So from the spleen, yung pudji, tatas po siya no, sa lungs. Then pag nasa heart na, yun. Isi-circulate ng heart yung blood. From the food G. Comes out at source point. From its origin in between two kidneys where gate of life resides. Original chi passes through trifle burner 
and is spread to internal organs and channels. The places where original cheese tastes are source U1 point. So, ayun po yung ating drawing. So, yung kidney yin and kidney yang, gate of life, then internal organs, pass to 12 channels, tapos ayun po yung source point. The following list summarizes nature of original chi. Original chi is like essence in chi form. It origin originates between the two kidneys. It is de derived from the free heaven essence. Yung free heaven essence, ibig sabihin eh, mana, talaga yung nandun na sa katawan natin na mana natin. It is constantly re replenished by the first heaven chi. So, Pag maayos po yung ating mga kinakain, healthy food, nare-replenis po yung mga nagagamit na post heaven, ay free heaven essence o yung ating original chi, nare-replenis po yan ng ating mga kinakain. It is related to the gate of life, Ming Men. It relies on the transporting function of the trifal burner to circulate toward the body. It circulate in the channels to emerge at the source points. Yun po yung ating chi. How can the original chi be treated in acupuncture? So may tatlo pong pamamaraan. Una, needling source point on 12 channels. So alam po natin, alamin natin, kung hindi pa natin alam, nasaan ba yung mga source points ng bawat organ. Kasi pag dinidal po natin yun, yung, ang original chi yung ating ginagamot. Needling and applying moxa to points on directing. So, yun. Bessel below navel REN 7, REN 6, REN 5, especially REN 4. Needling and applying moxa to do 4, Ming Men, which correspond to place from which original chi originates. So, sa do 4. Nandun po din siya. Pag ginalaw natin ni Needle, yun po yung original chi, yung ating pinapalakas. Clinical note, the source U1 is important to tonify the internal organs. Yun. Kidney 3 for the kidneys, liver 3 for the liver, heart 7 for the heart, spleen 3 for the spleen, lung 9 for the lungs. So napansin po ninyo yung U1 chi, earth point po yun. Mga earth point. Function of or original chi. It is the motive force of all psychological activities. So ito po yung nagpapakilos yung chi para makagalaw tayo. It is the base is the basis of kidney chi. Help transformation of gathering song chi into true chi. Yan kung wala tayong original chi, walang magiging song chi at true chi. Na nandoon nga yung blood at saka yung ating protective chi. Help transformation of food, yung good chi into blood, comes out at the source U1 point. So pag, pag inacupuncture natin ang U1 port, U1 points, doon po nang gagaling ang original chi. Okay po, thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Mildred. Siguro, ano, um, at least kahit pa paano, may natutunan tayo, di ba? <laughs> And incidentally, talking about Yuan source points, commit time po kayo, mag-review time mamayang 8 to 9 p.m. sa Zoom. And uh, I'm not sure kung makaka-attend si Dr. Gavino. But anyway, we would like to invite you. So to sum it up, um, there are three ways to needle, um, to, to, uh, to tonify the original chi. No? First is you needle the source points, Yuan points. Second, yung doon sa REN, REN, REN points, 4, 5, 6, 7. Of course, um, honestly, I just use 4 and 6. I think pwede na po yun. And lastly, yung do 4, kung kailangan po i, uh, kung kailangan po ng warmth ng patient. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Mildred. Thanks po. So we will now proceed to tongue diagnosis. And welcome back, Ma'am Teresita. She will talk about uh, the basics, tongue, spirit, and tongue, body, color. 
Good afternoon, Ma'am Teresita. Good afternoon po, Dr. Hector. Good afternoon, classmates. Welcome po sa Tang Diagnosis. Now let's talk about Tang Spirit and Tang Body Color. First, let, let's take up Tang Spirit. The Tang Spirit refers to the general appearance of the tongue. This is called Shen in Chinese, and it is much the same as the Shen of the complexion and eyes, which is referring to the qualities of brightness, sheen, and vitality. One can therefore distinguish two types of tongue, one with spirit and the other one is without spirit. A tongue with spirit denotes certain qualities of liveliness, suppleness, vitality, and brightness of the tongue body. A tongue without spirit looks lifeless, rather stiff, rather dark, and dull. One can use the analogy of a piece of meat. One can use the analogy of a piece of meat in a butcher's knife. Ah, I'm sorry, in a butcher's shop. The tongue with spirit looks like a fresh piece of meat, whereas the tongue without spirit looks like an old piece of meat which has become dark grayish and lifeless. The spirit should be observed in particular on the root of the tongue because the root reflects the state of the kidneys and the spirit of this area reflects the condition of the kidney essence. Kidney essence is the foundation of life and the absence of spirit on the root of the tongue indicates a severe deficiency of the kidneys and therefore the tendency to ill health. The tongue spirit is basically a prognostic sign because a tongue with spirit indicates that the patient may recover relatively easily. Whereas a tongue without spirit indicates that whatever the patient may suffer from the treatment may be prolonged, okay? It is important to remember that the tongue, without, the tongue spirit has nothing to do with other pathological signs on the tongue. In other words, the patient may have a tongue that is pathological in many respects, which is red with a thick coating. But if it has a spirit, it indicates that the kidney essence is still strong and that the body can fight off pathogenic factors. Okay, take note of this. Next is tongue body color. The tongue body color reflects primarily the state of the yin organs and blood. And it shows conditions of the heat or cold and of yin or yang deficiency. The normal body color is pale red. Alam na natin yan lahat. Okay? Traditionally, five pathological colors are described. Pale, red, dark red, purple, and blue. However, the clinical significance of the dark red tongue is essentially the same as that of the red tongue. And the clinical significance of the blue tongue is essentially the same as that of the bluish purple tongue. Therefore, the pathological colors may be narrowed down to three. These are pale, red, and purple. Now let's take a pale color, uh, pale tongue color. The pale tongue is paler than normal. The pallor ranges from a very slight paleness to a paleness to extreme that the tongue is almost white. The pale tongue indicates either yang deficiency or blood deficiency. In yang deficiency, it will tend to be slightly wet. 
whereas in blood deficiency, it will tend to be slightly dry. The latter is much more common in women. If it is only slightly pale, it may also indicate chi deficiency, okay? So this is uh, the appearance of a tongue who has, whose color is pale. A pale tongue body color, okay? The tongue is often pale only on the sides. If the pallor is all along the sides, it indicates liver blood deficiency. If it is only in the central section, it is spleen blood deficiency. In severe cases of liver blood deficiency, the sides may also become orangey. The pale tongue normally has a coating. A pale tongue without coating indicates severe blood deficiency. This is relatively rare and is usually seen only in women, okay? Your number, thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Mom Teresita. Next, we go to diagnosis by interrogation, no? And uh, nasa ano pa rin po tayo, feeling of cold, part seven. So we will discuss the exterior conditions, part four. So uh, fever in exterior patterns. <clears throat> it is very important to understand na yung Chinese term for fever does not necessarily indicate yung what we mean by fever. Fever is a sign in modern Western medicine, not in old Chinese medicine. In old China, kasi there were obviously no thermometers. And the symptom described in the old text does not necessarily mean that the patient has an actual fever. So it literally means emitting burning heat and indicates that the patient's body feels hot and in severe cases, almost burning to the touch. So the areas touched are usually the forehead and the dorsum of the hands. Okay. So pag, uh, we don't uh, touch the palms. Kasi pag palms mainit, this would reflect empty heat. No? Yun. It is characteristic of the so-called fever in the exterior stage of invasions of wind that the dorsum of the hands feels hot compared with the palms. And the upper back feels hot compared with the chest. Okay, so we know what to do if we're considering wind heat invasion. This objective hot feeling of the patient's body may or may not be accompanied by an actual fever. In fevers of internal origin, there are cases in which the patient has an actual low-grade fever and the body feels cold to the touch. Huh? So it is uh, important to remember that in the context of exterior conditions from invasions of wind, fever indicates the objective hot feeling of the patient's body with or without actual raised body temperature. Hindi po siya feeling ng, of heat. Uh, in fact, the patient feels cold. Okay? Fever does not necessarily indicate a raised temperature. I hope everybody remembers that. It indicates that the patient's forehead and dorsum of the hands feel hot to the touch. The patient may or may not have an actual fever. Now let's go to simultaneous fever and feeling of cold. When the symptom of shivers and feeling cold occur simultaneously, with the objective sign of the patient's body feeling hot to the touch or having an actual fever, it indicates acute invasion of external wind. And this denotes that the pathogenic factor is still on the exterior. It is the symptoms of shivering and feeling cold that indicate that the pathogenic factor is on the exterior. The moment the patient does not feel cold any longer but feels hot, and if in bed throws off the blankets, it means the pathogenic factor is now in the interior and has turned into heat, okay? Pathology of fever. The fever or hot feeling of the body in external invasions of wind, uh, this is due to the struggle 
between the body's chi or the upright chi and the external pathogenic factor. So may gerang nangyayari. So the strength of the fever or hot feeling of the body reflects intensity of the struggle. So this will depend on the relative strength of the external pathogenic factor and the strength of the upright chi. Okay? Okay. Um, the stronger the external pathogenic factor, the higher is the fever or the hot feeling of the body. The stronger the upright chi, the higher is the fever or hot feeling of the body. Thus, the fever will be highest when both the external pathogenic factor and the upright chi are strong. The relative strength of the pathogenic factor and the upright chi is only one factor which determines the intensity of the fever or hot feeling of the body. Another factor is the constitution of a person. A person with a young constitution, that means may predominance of young, will be more prone to a higher fever or hot feeling of the body. Okay. So let's go to degrees of fever. There are three possible degrees of fever or hot feeling. No? Strong pathogenic factor and strong upright chi, so may high fever or hot feeling of the body. Strong pathogenic factor, pero weak yung upright chi, or vice versa. Medium fever. Weak pathogenic factor and weak upright chi, low fever or no fever. Okay? So maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Let's now go to pulse diagnosis. Let's listen again to Ma'am Mildred. Good afternoon po ulit, Ma Mildred. Good afternoon po ulit. Okay, pause. Pulse diagnosis, left front position, heart. Dito na pala si Sir Dino. <laughs> Ayan, ayan po si Sir Dino. Tuli mo na, Sir. Sir Dino, good afternoon po. Hindi ko napansin. Wait lang Do you want me to make you the ano the host? Ikaw na diretso na dok. Oh, sige okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, classmates. Uh, pulse diagnosis, left front position. Okay. Dito sa left front position. Uh, meaning dito sa my left hand natin yung uh, front position yung pinakauna. Ito po yung illustration. Meron tayong left atrium, mitral bulb, right cuspid bulb, right atrium ventricle, and the diaphragm. So, yun po. From the left front position corresponds to the heart and the pericardium or the heart and the small intestine in the five element arrangement of the pulses. So, di ba yung sabi ko kanina, nasa unahan yung uh, yung unang pulso, yung po yung sa heart, pericardium, or the small intestine. Emotional stress frequently causes abnormal qualities at this position and I shall discuss the most frequent qualities one by one. This discussion assumes that a particular pulse position has a quality that is different from the rest of the pulse. For example, the discussion of the overflowing quality of the left front position applies if such quality is found only at this position. So yung left front position, kung dun lang po yung uh, overflowing quality, wala naman dun sa iba, ito yung uh, nag apply po na uh, print, uh, Category. If all the pulse position were overflowing naman, the interpretation would of course be different. So, letter A, overflowing. I frequently encounter an overflowing quality at this position when the person is affected by deep emotional problem, causing anxiety and worry. So, sa emotional uh, problem, you have anxiety and worry, which is characterized by overflowing na pulse. 
more often than not, these problems are due to relationship difficulties. It is important to stress that the past quality may be overflowing at this position only in relation to the rest of the past. So, dapat uh, dun lang po siya may overflowing na characteristic. And when it is so, it stands out and attracts our attention. Therefore, if all the other pulse positions are quite weak and the pulse of the heart position is... Next slide, though. Much stronger and more, more superficial, we may classify this as being overflowing. Kung naiba po siya. Although the same quality in a person with strong pulses would be normal, it is essential that relatively overflowing quality of disposition when the rest of the positions are very weak is not interpreted as being normal. When that particular position stands out and is out of tune with the rest of the pulse, it usually indicates where the main problem lies. Sa overflowing quality on the heart position also indicates that a consequence of deep emotional stress, chi rebels upward towards the chest and face. And the patient would experience a feeling of heat in the face, kasi nga uh, umakyat, a sense of constriction at the throat, and a feeling of energy rising to the head. Sa letter B, yung short, uh, short quality on the heart position, also indicates emotional problems. So kanina anxiety. Uh, dito naman sa short, sadness and grief. The short pulse lacks a wave that is, it does not flow smoothly with a wave-like movement towards the wrist. Dr. Shen calls this the sad pulse because it is nearly always due to this emotion, so yung sadness nga. I frequently see this pulse in people who are sad from being lonely and who uh, crave love and affection. This pulse is also seen in people who tend to hide their emotions. So yung mga nagtatago ng emotion. If both heart and lung position feel short, this can be due to two causes. Either it is due to sadness as above or to an accident to the chest. To differentiate these two conditions, one must refer to the other aspect of diagnosis. For example, in a case of sadness, the eyes might lack spirit. So makikita po yung shen na um, lakang spirit, the tongue might be red on the tip or have a heart crack, and the clock complexion might be failed. So thank you po. Thank you very much, Sir Dino. Okay, so I hope that was clear. Let's now proceed to differential diagnosis. And uh, let's call on Ma'am Meets. You. Good afternoon po, Ma'am Meets. Good afternoon, Dr. Hector, and good afternoon, everyone. Medyo nawawala yung net. Okay lang. <laughs> okay lang po. Oh, clear naman so far. Sige, Dok. Thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone, ulit. Ang topic natin ngayon ay liver blood deficiency. Okay? So, yung pattern na to, it has all the general manifestation of blood deficiency. Katulad ng dizziness, pale lips, dull pace, dull pace. Okay? The liver stores blood. That is the reason any blood deficiency often involves the liver. Okay? This pattern has an impact on areas the liver relates to, such as the eyes, the sinews, the nails, the women's menstruation, and the etheral soul. Uh, first of all, liver opens to the eyes. Thus, the symptoms of blurred vision and diminished night vision because the eyes are not nourished and moistened by sufficient blood. Secondly, the liver controls the sinews which includes the tendons, cartilage, and ligaments of the limbs. If liver blood is deficient, malnutrition of the sinews results, causing muscular weaknesses, cramps, stiffness, rigidity, joint pain, as well as numbness and tremors of the limbs. 
Okay, di pa rin Harrison. Then, the liver manifests in the nails, hence the withered and the nails, as they are not moistened properly. Dry yung skin, ah, nails. Okay, brittle. The liver also supplies blood to directing ren mai and penetrating vessels or the chong mai so as to produce monthly periods. So, if there aren't enough liver blood, it results in scanty period or even absence of periods. Okay? So, liver blood deficiency can derive from saan galing siya? Sa diet. Uh, ang spleen ay responsible sa pag gawa ng blood for making blood which then gets stored in the liver. The spleen function can be largely weakened due to a diet poor in nutrition or lacking in blood generating the foods such as the red meat or grains. As a result, less blood for the liver. Okay, so ito, nagagaling din sa emotional stress katulad ng sadness and grief it can consume the liver blood directly. Uh, on the other hand, these emotions may only also first harm the chi, which then resulting in poor blood formation. So, sa ano rin, uh, from physical overexertion, ano ba yun? Excessive physical exercise, uh, nag-harm ng spleen yang. So, as a result, the spleen's Foods transforming and transporting function, TNT, is impaired. Thus, less blood can be generated and stored in the liver. Excessive exercise also injures the sinus. Since the liver controls, moisten, and nourishes the sinus, which in the long run can give rise to liver blood deficiency. Okay? Uh, it can also from profuse blood loss. Ano ba yon? Uh, the liver stores the blood, therefore, a serious hemorrhage, such as during childbirth or long-term heavy periods, can also lead to deficiency of liver blood. Okay. So, ang uh, etiology, diet, poor in nourishment or lacking in protein, damage to in or blood as a result of prolonged illness, blood loss, excessive physical work, chronic illnesses, too much sexual activity. Okay? Underlying and or accompanying pathology, stagnation of liver chi, spleen chi deficiency, kidney deficiency, liver yin deficiency. Okay? Sign and symptoms, dizziness, numbness or tingling of the limbs, insomnia, blurred vision, vision float, visual floaters. Okay? Poor night vision, malabo mata sa, lalo sa gabi. Light mens menstruation, dull pale complexion, pale lips, muscular weakness, cramps, brittle nails, dry skin, okay? When you palpate the pulse, it may be choppy or fine. Kapag tininan niya yung dila, uh, pale ang body, mas paler yung mga sides, and sometimes parang orange yung kulay. So, ang treatment principle, nourish the young, rectify the blood. Anong gagamitin treatments? Uh, acupuncture, uh, points, bladder 18, uh, it nourishes the liver blood. Bladder 17, with moxa, nourishes the blood. Liver 14, comes the liver. This inhibits chi. Spleen 6, nourishes blood. Stomach 36, supplements the blood. Bladder 23 enriches kidney to generate blood. Bladder 20 uh, fortifies spleen to generate blood. Liver 8 supplements liver blood. Liver 3 courses liver chi. Ren 4 supplements blood or mox use moxa. Ha? Uh, GB34 to nourish the sinus. So, extra point yu yao, it can benefit the eyes. So, ang gagamitin technique ay needle with supplementation. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you learn from here. Thank you very much, Mom Needs. Ito. I'm sure ang dami, nating, ang dami nilang natutunan. Natin lah. Okay. So, um, kahit medyo ano siya, but it's still good to be reviewing all these patterns. Thank you very much.
So from differential diagnosis, punta naman tayo sa acupuncture patterns and practice. Let's listen to uh, Sir Dino Pinero once again. Good afternoon, Sir Dino. Uh, good afternoon, though. I understand your topic is uh, palpitation. No? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, sige dap. Uh, topic natin today, uh, palpitation of the heart, which refers to the subjective sensation of the heart uh, beating fast and vigorously and is associated uh, symptoms of anxiety and restlessness. Its severity and its cause both vary. So, sa etiology and pathology, uh, occurs principally when the blood's constitution is weak, when stimulated by strong passion, or when certain exogenous pathogenic evil invade the body. A weak constitution may be due to its inherent weakness, chronic illness, various condition of blood loss, or excessive fatigue, or excessive sexual activity. These conditions may lead to deficiency of qi, blood, yin, or yang, so that the heart loses its nourishment. The effect of passion are mainly the result of prolonged brooding or fear, which deplete heart qi and makes it insecure. When the heart qi... Uh, next, Doc. Is deficient and insecure, yin blood also becomes insufficient and unable to nourish the heart. Alternately, the heart chain may become gilled, thereby allowing phlegm to form and fire to blaze. Uh, disturbance of the heart by phlegm and fire leads to disturbance of the mind. So kasama na yung mind na may palpitation of the heart. Certain illness of heat or rheumatism due to exogenous evil may injure the heart channel or block the heart meridians and vessels. This causes uh, stasis of heart blood. In addition to these three cate categories, palpitation of the heart can also occur when the patient overindulges in smoking, sa alcohol, or greasy foods. Such overindulgence can also lead to generation of exogenous phlegm and heat, which can, can in turn cause disturbance of the mind and palpitation of the heart. Thus, though the heart is the principal organ affected in palpitation, the spleen and the kidney are often also intimately involved in the causation of palpation, palpitation. Overall, the pathology of palpitation may be of deficiency or of strength. So deficiency type of palpitation includes deficiency of qi, blood, yin, or yang, which leads to the losing, uh, heart losing its nourishment, while strength type includes strength of phlegm and fire that disturb the heart. So magkaiba sila. Or heart blood gilling and stagnation is, is stagnating so that the chi and blood cannot circulate smoothly. Such deficiency and strength may be mixed, and one condition can transform into the other. If a condition of strength becomes prolonged, it can damage the genuine chi and lead to its deficiency. And a condition of deficiency often enables attack by exogenous factors and continuous symptoms. Moreover, in certain severe illness, Yung deficiency of qi or yin can injure yang so that heart yang becomes depleted sometimes so severely that it collapses. na. Sa clinical manifestation, palpitation is characterized by the subjective sensation of the heart beating rapidly with anxiety, restlessness, and the feeling of having lost control over oneself. It is often accompanied by shortness of breath, weakness, fatigue, and disinclination to speak. During the attack, there may be abnormalities of the pulse so that palp palpation of the pulse is of exceedingly important significance during an attack. 
depending on its cause, palpitation may be associated with a pulse that is hurried, hesitant, intermittent, rapid, swift, impede, or thread-like. In some patients with more severe cases, the beating of the heart may be so pronounced that it moves the clotting overlying the apex of the heart. Palpitation may be intermittent or sustained. Depending upon the cause, intermittent palpitation may occur once in several days or several times in one day. It may be quite intense during the attack, but the patient may be without discomfort during remission. With sustained palpitation, on the other hand, the patient may be continuously, continually restless and anxious with loss of self-control. Uh, thank you, Paul. For listening. Thank you very much, Sir Dino. <clears throat> okay, so I hope that was clear. Sir Dino will continue with part two tomorrow. Next is signs and symptoms. And may we request the kindness of Mom Mildred to do the honors? Yes, Doc. Okay. Dito po, uh, the topic is uh, the mouth, pa rin, deviation of the mouth. Okay po. Sign and symptoms, deviation of the mouth. Liver wind. Deviation of the mouth, tremors, severe diseases, tinnitus, headache, numbness of limbs, tics, stiff, deviated or moving tongue, wiry flat. Why repulse? Yun po yung mga sign ng may liver wind. So tatandaan po natin yung kasi mahalaga yun. Liver wind and phlegm. Deviation of the mouth. Severe dizziness. Blurred vision. Tremors. Numbness or tingling of the limbs. Tinnitus. Nausea. Sputum in the throat. A feeling of oppression of the chest. Stiff or deviated and swollen tongue, a swollen tongue, wiry, slippery falls. So, yan po yung sign pag merong liver wind and phlegm. Invasion of wind cold in the channels of the face. So, pag may wind cold sa face, sudden deviation of the mouth, yung nangingiwi sa Tagalog. Tapos, nagkakaroon po ng pamamanid ang mukha this is due to the, an invasion of wind cold, not in the lungs. So, hindi po siya sa lungs pumasok. Defensive chief portion as in common cold and influenza, but rather in the channels of the face. So, nasa channels pa lang po yun ng face, kaya nagkakaroon ng deviation of the mouth. Pag may liver chief stagnation naman po, intermittent deviation of the mouth. Yung pa, pa, pangiwi-ngiwi. Defending on the emotional moods. Hypochondrial or epigastric distension. Irritability. Moodiness. A feeling of a lump in the throat. Premenstrual tension. Wiry falls. Yung madaling ma, magalit ng mga babae pag magmemens. Yan. Sign po yan ng my liver chi stagnation. So, deficiency of blood, of chi, and blood. A slight deviation of the mouth. So, pag ano po, slight lang ano. Poor appetite. Nawawala ng gana. Nagkakaroon ng loose stool. Mahina ang boses. Madaling mapagod. Nagkakaroon ng blood vision. Nahihilo. Numbness or tingling of limbs. Tapos nagkakaroon din ng palpitation kasi kulangan ng blood. Dull, pale complexion. Yan. Pale tongue, weak or choppy pulse. Pale yung mga makikita natin dahil deficient ng blood. Pag toxic hit, toxic hit naman po ang nasa channel ng ating face, so may deviation of the mouth din. Pero mararamdaman natin, mas nauuhaw tayo, may bitter taste, ito wala tayong kinaing mapait. Tapos, swelling in pain of the face. Ayan, namamaga. Toothache. Oh, toxic hit po yun pag may toothache. Tapos, sumasakit yung ulo, mapula yung mata, swollen face, 
red tongue with red points with thick, sticky yellow coating. Overflowing, slippery, rapid falls. So toxic, toxic heat po yun sa ating face. Thank you po. Thank you very much, Ma'am Mildred. Punta na tayo sa last but uh, a very important topic, asthma. And let's uh, listen to Sir Aldrin straight from Pangasinan. Good afternoon po, Sir Aldrin. Uh, good afternoon po, Doc Hector. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Okay po, uh, continuation po tayo ng ating asthma topic pa rin. Share screen lang po ako. Okay, so non-allergic uh, asthma, late onset pa rin po. Uh, pang uh, five days na po tayo sa topic na to. Okay? Mm. So, going back doon sa mga previous na slides natin, uh, yun na iklaro na wind uh, ang main pathogenic factor in asthma. Okay? So, having discussed the rule of the lung and defensive chi system as the root in asthma, we can now turn our attention to wind as the main manifestation of this disease. So, not only win yung pathogenic factor, so yun, kasama din po dyan yung deficient uh, uh, yung lung at saka kidneys defensive chi. Okay? So, deficiency po yan. Some of the characteristic of win explain its effort, uh, its effect on the body and ma. In fact, win contracts, uh, it comes and goes it bouts and it causes spasm. So, sabi ng isang modern doctor, si Dr. Hulay of the Pharmacology Department of the Nanjing University of Chinese Medicine, false allergic asthma, chest wind. Okay, or the Xiong Ping. Wind is the main pathogenic factor in asthma not in the sense of an invasion of external wind, but at a kind of a chronic external wind lock in the bronchi. So, anong ibig sabihin nito? Um, so, alam natin na, di ba, usually pag sinabi natin wind, pathogenic factor siya, di ba? So, nag invade uh, sa isang, sa isang uh, uh, patient through the skin. Okay? At alam din natin na yung skin uh, ang nagko-control dyan is the lung defensive chi including the kidney defensive chi also. Pero hindi siya necessarily na, na yung wind na ito is uh, from external pumasok. Kundi kwan uh, na siya parang uh, chronic external wind na naglak na or parang nag-reside na siya doon sa uh, bronchi ng fish. So, the lungs are the most exterior of the yin organs at they control the skin. The bronchial uh, mucosa could be seen as an extension of the skin. Thus, just as wind invades the skin, it may invade the bronchi latch itself there and cause bronchospasm. Uh, even from a Western point of view, animal studies suggest that the pathogenic features of skin and pulmonary actions are very similar. So, yun, uh, yung character na win ini-explain dito sa diagram. So, yun, nakaturo siya doon sa may bronchi. Uh, diba? So, it contracts, it comes and goes, it causes uh, bronchospasm, then bouts of wheezing. Okay? So, kapag yung wind, uh, nag-lock na siya dyan, okay, so kailangan ng trigger. Ganyan na, na kapag meron yung trigger, like allergen, etc., 
So, yun, mag, uh, mag-manifest yung asthma. Okay, kaya nga po siya comes and go. Kasi, pag uh, sa discussion previously, kapag plem yung kanyang pathogenic factor, ganyan, kapag uh, na-dispel mo na yung plem, ganyan, supposed to be, mawawala na rin yung asthma, pero hindi. Andun pa rin. And then, same true with the uh, shape of the tongue at saka yung pulse, uh, hindi siya nagmamanifest ng plem. Okay? So, yon Kaya mas malapit-lapit siya sa win as pathogenic factor. So, according to authors, the wheezing, restlessness, cough, expectoration, and tightness of the chest are not typical diagnostic sign of asthma. They believe that the most important sign is a history of recurrent bouts of asthma, often triggered by exogenous factors such as allergens, irritant, physical effort, or viral infections. So, as the symptoms of asthma are typically episodic, the physical examination is often normal, not only when the patient is asymptomatic, but sometimes even during a period of frequent attacks. This would seem to show that the main pathogenic factor in asthma is something non-substantial like wind. Parang ibig sabihin ng non-substantial, parang, parang uh, hindi mo siya nakikita. Hindi kagaya ng phlegm na substantial, di ba? Na kapag in-extreme mo, makikita mo talaga na merong phlegm. Pero itong wind kasi, kahit in-extreme mo, hindi mo siya makikita eh na may presence ng wind. Kasi non-substantial nga po siya. Pero kapag nag-trigger yung uh, or merong attack or merong episode, uh, merong uh, allergens, etc., ganyan, natitrigger siya yung asthma. Okay? This can happen only against a background of deficiency of the lung and kidneys defensive chi system, which allows wind to lodge in the bronchi uh, for a long time. Okay? Kasi definitely naman kapag malakas yung lung defensive chi at saka kidneys defensive chi, yung external wind, hindi naman talaga siya makakapasok agad-agad yan. Pero given na deficient nga yan, uh, nakapasok na siya, uh, tapos nag-reside na siya or uh, nag-lodge na siya uh, doon sa bronchi for long time, sabi niya. Thus, asthma is characterized by wind, a non-substantial pathogenic factor, So this may explain how X-ray have no diagnostic value in asthma as they may show phlegm but not win. Also, in uh, asthmatic children or young people, the tongue is rarely swollen and the pulse is rarely slippery as one would expect in phlegm was the main pathogenic factor. Okay, so... Yon, uh, uh, some patient, uh, rare, very rare lang na swelen yung tang. Kasi pag sinabi nating swelen yung tang and then slippery rin, including the pulse, uh, manifestation talaga ng may phlegm. Okay? Pero very rare yon Ibig sabihin, uh, most asthmatic patient, uh, hindi naman swelen yung tang, hindi rin naman slippery. Uh, yung pulse nila. Okay? Uh, instead, the tongue is often thin and the pulse is tight. So, the Chinese idea of wind may be compared with the Western concept of allergens. So, the inhalation of dust, fecal matters from house dust, mites, pollen, and animal dander could be compared with invasion of wind as conceived in Chinese medicine. In fact, the Chinese character for wind includes the radical for insect or worm that is comparable with allergens and germs carried by the wind. So, ito yung uh, karak- Chinese character ng wind. Okay? Pero, 
yun din pa. Insect din at saka worm din daw siya. Okay, so the main problem is asthma is a deficiency of lung and kidney's defensive chi system which allows the wind to penetrate and mamalagi uh, sa bronchi ng patient causing bouts of bronchospasm when Dr. Yi Chang She said that in breathlessness Chuan if the pathogenic factor is phlegm is expelled it will never return in wheezing the pathogenic factor is hidden in the interior and intact and there are frequent episodes over the years okay kasi totoo rin na nga naman kapag phlegm yung pathogenic factor kapag na-expel mo na yung phlegm supposed to be hindi na magre-recur yung asthma di ba pero it comes and go kasi eh pabalik-balik siya kapag merong trigger pabalik-balik siya okay he correctly highlighted the difference between wheezing and breathless breathlessness breathlessness is due to phlegm and once this is resolved the condition is cured permanently Allergic asthma is due to wind in the bronchi causing periodic bouts of wheezing. The reason this is difficult to expel is not that it is particularly deep in the interior but that it is linked to the deficiency of lung and kidney's defensive G system. Until this deficiency is addressed, the wind cannot be expelled. Okay? So, yon Para ang gustong sabihin dito, hindi dahil sa mahirap uh, i-treat o i-expel yung wind na nagre-reside doon sa bronchi, di ba? Kasi, ibig sabihin lang nito, mai-expel mo lang siya kapag na-address mo yung deficiency ng lang at saka kidney's defensive G. Ganun po siya. Okay, so yun lang po yung topic natin tonight. Thank you po. Hello, Sir, Sir Aldrin. So, ibig sabihin po pala nun, kaya pabalik-balik yung asthma kasi kahit umiinom ka ng mga gamot anti-asthma, talagang hindi na palakas yung mga organs, kaya pabalik-balik. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ganoon po siya. Kaya, para ang gustong sabihin niya, yung pathogenic factor, wind. Yung wind nag-penetrate, nakapasok, nag-lodge uh, siya sa bronchi kasi nga po merong the, the deficiency yung lang at saka kidney's defensive chi. Ganun po siya. Kaya kahit na anong treatment mo, kahit i-expel mo siya kagaya ng phlegm, sabi nga kanina, yung phlegm supposed to be kapag na-expel mo uh, permanently, wala na siya eh. Pero in terms ng asthma, Uh, hindi. Kasi hanggang hindi mo na-resolve or napapalakas yung lang at saka uh, kidneys defensive chi. Ganyan. Hindi mo talaga totally ma-expel yung wind na nag-reside na doon sa bronchi. Kasi dinadilate lang ang bronchi eh. Bronchodilators lang ang gamit. ba diba? Kaya dapat talaga ano, it's time for us to really share no? if they're willing to partner with us. Uh, ako kasi naniniwala, there has to be a very good uh, partnership between the acupuncture, between the acupuncturists and the, and the medical people. Yes, Doc. Kasi yeah. ko yung naging pasyente ko noon na ano, ang tagal na nung asma niya, sabi niya, ba't kaya di ako gumagaling, ang dami ko namang iniinom na gamot. Nung after po ma-acupuncture, hanggang ngayon po hindi na siya inaasma. Totoo. Sa so, kasadami ng iniinom na gamot, alam nyo naman na nakakompromise na, na, yung kidney. Walang kagaling. <laughs> diba? So, so, yung kidney ano, nga po niya may problem na eh. Yun na yung nag-aggravate kaya siya nag-aasma. Nung kaya, natreat na po yung kidney na palakas plus yung lungs, wala na yung asthma. So at least, no, um, it is understandable bakit ang haba ng topic ng asthma. But sa akin kasi, I always believe na nakakatulong talaga ito. So um kasi kung ganun lang yung 
ano natin, approach sa asthmatic patients, hindi talaga natin alam kung ano yung main pathogenic uh, factor no, ng asthma, wala rin mangyayari. Di ba? Kasi karamihan ang gagawin lang, hindi naman ano, hindi naman na-address yung phlegm. Di ba? Um, inaano lang yung breathlessness, yung yung symptom which is actually nakakaawa ang patient. So thank you very much kay Sir Aldrin. I hope this has opened the eyes of a lot of uh, I'm sure maraming ma manonood nito and uh, I think the reason why Totoo lang, no, for your info, talagang ang lakay ng views nung last three episodes. Uh, so, I don't post them anymore because super dami na. So, I think uh, we're all uh, learning from this. So, habang kaya natin, we will continue with this uh, program. Uh, alam ko naman kahit uh, pro bono ito, no, wala namang tayong ano dito. Uh, patuloy pa rin. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't see um, many local people watching this. And for your information, we see a lot of people from other countries already. Yeah, so meron nang nakikinig sa, nanonood sa US, sa India, yun. Thailand, pumasok na, Singapore. So I'm very, very happy. So sana po mag-level up tayong lahat. And I'm very, very grateful uh, sa ating mga presenters na talagang walang sawa pa rin kahit BC, di ba? <laughs> so, with that, we would like to thank everyone for joining. If you have time tonight, uh, kindly uh, ano, listen mamiya sa 8 to 9. We will talk about the Yuan source point. Di ba yun yung topic mo, Ma'am Mildred? Yes po. So, ako kasi... Uh, I think I, I always believe in tingi tingi, no? Like uh, to be able to really get to know the points, I think we need to categorize them. So, uh, like hopefully, lahat ma memorize yung uh, mga yuan points, uh, which are very very powerful, uh, especially the needling technique, and uh, hindi lang needling technique yung talagang actual location, di ba? So I hope I um. Alam ko hindi masyadong ano yung point categories but it's always uh, it always pays to you know to always go back uh, para naman sa para masaya naman yung pasyente no so hope to see you later thank you sa ating mga presenters um good evening Hello. everyone thank you po kumusta kailan ba yung next ano ng laser <laughs> Oo nga, para may manalo po ulit. You might, you might want to invite them sa, ano, uh, I think nagkakaroon po ng uh, renewed interest on laser acupuncture. Would you like Opo. to, to make an pong pang combine eh, kasi pag yung mga takot sa needle, ginagamit po namin. Pero natry ko po talaga, very good siyang pampababa ng blood pressure at saka sa sugat. At, at least na-address na, no? Like, uh, there was a time tinanong uh, paano daw masisedate or matotonify at least through the lecture of uh, Dr. Webb na na natutunan na natin. Yes po, ang daming tulong ng lecture ni Dr. Webb. Mm -hmm. Sana po ano, um, continue, ang daming nanood as in naka 300 views na yata 350 yung laser. Talagang talong-talo yung mga basic natin. So, so maraming user doc ng laser na sa Pilipinas eh sa oh. iba-ibang sa iba-ibang bansa po galing ginagamit na talaga nila. Minsan nga lang hindi nila alam kung paano talaga yung tamang paggamit. Siyempre sa promotion lang yun nung nagbebenta. Mm -hmm. Ano talaga kasi information dissemination is very important, no? And uh, as long as naiintindihan natin uh yung principles behind the instrument, behind the gadget, I think uh, maraming uh, magsusupport, maraming mag-consider to use this as a... Uh, yung mga as, gumagamit, Doc, at nakikinig sa inyong Zoom, natututo po. Actually, ano natutuwa ako, no? Uh, siguro maraming nagla-like. Uh, medyo nagulat na lang ako marami. Hindi pa siya na-monetize kasi kulang pa yung hours. So, happy naman ako. At least, I think we're getting there. Yun. 
So thank you po for your support and uh, I cannot thank each and every one of you. You know who you are. Uh, let's continue. No, I'm I'm sure yung iba dito hindi naman interested talaga sa ano. So, but it's how we can actually help other people, no? So para po gumanda naman yung future natin. Uh, anang ano dito ng uh, ako kasi I always believe in a in a practitioner who is so well-rounded, hindi naka-focus lang sa isang bagay, no? Para lahat naman matulungan. Okay? So, thank you everyone. Uh, and I hope tuloy-tuloy tayo. Can we, yeah, we will meet again tomorrow. Thank you po. Uh, and thank also, Mamiya, you, if you have time. But I'm not forcing you to attend. It's okay. <laughs> Maraming salamat po. Good evening. Thank you po. Good evening po. Thank you po. And class ko na classmates. Oh.